What is going on, guys? We are at our Thanksgiving showdown breakdowns here. This is going to be for your first uh, Detroit Lions and Houston Texans game. Uh, we have uh, are going to have video content available for all three showdowns, plus uh, the main slate is uh, taken care of by TK, uh, his turkey bowl picks. So uh, we are super excited uh, to continue to cover um, all the sports in DFS here at FSI. So make sure that if you have not hit that subscribe button, do that below. Hit a like, hit a comment on the video. It's, it's greatly appreciated and helps us continue to push out free content as well. Um, if you have not got a chance to check out Gator Guys UCL content, uh, Champions League or soccer, uh, it is one of the best in the business. So make sure you check that out. Uh, he's doing a phenomenal job with that as well. All right, let's get into the odds here. Um, I'll pull up uh, NFL. So this is Houston Texans and Detroit Lions. Um, Houston comes in here as a three-point uh, favorite, 51 and a half point over-under, actually the highest over-under of the three games on Thanksgiving, uh, which is definitely, uh, we'll see here in the builds, like there's some good reasons to, to like that, but there's also just a ton of injuries. So, um, and, and some good value. So let's get into it. Uh, let's not waste any more time here. Let's talk about uh, tomorrow's slate or today, whenever you're listening to, to the content. Uh, let's start with Houston. Okay. Randall Cobb out for the year. Uh, trying to get a second opinion likely won't matter. Doesn't matter for us on Thursday because that's what we're focusing on. Um, Deshaun Watson, you know, 13,200. You can't find a reason, in my opinion, not to play him. Uh, he has the ability to run the ball so he can, you know, score a rushing touchdown. You know, his floor is uh, pretty close to 20 points. You know, I, I just don't think that there's a way in this format that you fade him. Now, um, 13, two is a little bit price restrictive, so maybe you don't use him in the captain spot, but I think he will be a popular option there in cash. Uh, Will Fuller, uh, you know, people like, like the last time I played Will Fuller, I know it was like a classic slate, whatever slate, I, I don't know, Baltimore. Yeah. Right here. I think he like started the game, had one target or something, or didn't even get targeted maybe. And like went out with a hamstring for a little bit, but then came back. Still didn't do anything. Every other game he's been dominant, basically, except for this game against Cleveland. So um, it is one of Deshaun Watson's favorite targets. 11,200 is a bit steep for a receiver, but I do think that you can make uh, the case for him. You know, now if you're deciding between him and Matt Stafford, uh, I think the floor cash play is definitely the quarterback because you're just like guaranteeing like he has the ball every time they they're, they take a snap. So uh, Will Fuller is a great play, but I think you can even go to Cooks as a, uh, a cheaper option, $1,400 cheaper. Um, you're seeing similar production from him. Um, so I, I don't think there's any, any reason that you can't do that. Uh, you're not going to be able to get in Watson, Fuller, Cooks, and Stafford likely unless you punt at captain um, or go cheaper in that route. But I think if you can get three of those four, you're probably pretty happy. Um, Kenny Galladay obviously can make a difference. He's still limited. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm just like assuming he's out every week until he says he can finally play. So, uh, you know, came back those what two weeks and just dominated per usual. And then said he has some weird pictures on Instagram and then he's out again. So whatever. Uh, Kenny Galladay, good play if he's in. Uh, I'm not really going to worry about him yet. Uh, Swift has kind of like like AP is like, give him the ball more often. And, and I, you can't, we, we know in Georgia, his talent was, was phenomenal. And now he's getting that opportunity. 16 carries, 13 carries. He can catch the ball, five targets. I really, really like uh, Swift in this matchup. Um, you know, they're not, they're not good against the run at all. Houston isn't. So um, he's questionable now, assuming he plays. I really like Swift if for some reason he misses. Obviously, that is going to be an increase to Adrian Peterson and carry on Johnson. So love Swift here at uh, 8,400 as well. Duke Johnson, you know, he's cheap enough in, in his role. Uh, but I don't love him. I, I don't know. Just not something I'm, I'm getting into. I'm, I'm kind of hopping between both teams here. But I will get back to my 3-2-1 format here and go over my three ca top cash. I'll kind of identify that here at the end um, as I talk through this. But Marvin Jones Jr., Marvin Jones Jr., 
has been the direct beneficiary of Calvin Johnson being out or not Calvin Johnson. Sorry. Similar to Calvin Johnson, Kenny Galladay, um, Kenny Galladay being out Marvin Jones jr. Who used to just kind of be like a big, big play guy uh, definitely has increased his uh, volume and his targets with the absence of, of Galladay. So I really like Marvin Jones jr. Two at 7,400. That's what make this slate really interesting because I think you can make a case for those top four guys really easily but then I also think Swift and Marvin Jones Jr. are phenomenal plays as well. Um, you know, Houston's defense isn't great. Uh, Hawkinson, uh, 7,200, has been really good as a tight end. He's questionable, limited in practice. If he sits out, you know, then we look to some value at tight end. But I think um, if he's in, I I'm still likely not landing on him. I'd prefer to go to Marvin Jones Jr. or be it up to DeAndre Swift. Um, Let's go down here a little bit further. Um, Jordan Atkins is just kind of part of that roulette wheel that is the Houston Texans tight end group. And being priced the highest at 5,600, I will be a hard pass on, on him. Um, so no thanks. Uh, if Swift is in, I am also passing on Peterson and Johnson. Like this mid-range right here is like my fade. Like I don't want Atkins. I don't want AP. I don't want Johnson in any cash formats if Swift is in. Um, kickers, obviously, if you know me, they are usually my bread and butter. Uh, I mean, yeah, they can have a floor game of one, but I think the, the median projection most time for kickers is gonna be somewhere between six and 10. Assuming they score a little bit, get a field goal. Um, what did I miss here that I was gonna talk about? Marvin Hall. Marvin Hall is questionable as well. This is what I mean. This is, you know, like every guy's got the questionable take, but I get it. It's a short week. Uh, I like him GPP. He's got some nice upside here. Not getting still a ton of targets, but I mean, he had, he did here against Indianapolis, but um, I do like him, but uh, probably a little bit more GPP. Again, like there, I might go to the kickers over him, but um, that's probably a cash conservative uh, take on Marvin Hall. Uh, but let's get down to some, Phenomenal value here. Um, I mean, sorry, I shouldn't say phenomenal because there's not one that's just like automatic value, but I think there's a lot of good options down here. Uh, Kiki Kuti, and I probably pronounced that wrong, is going to likely take over the primary slot role. He kind of did the last game, but he didn't do much with it. He did have a touchdown, short touchdown, but um, he's great value at 3,400, um, assuming that he's going to be the number three starting receiver in the slot with the absence of Randall Cobb. Um, Fells is part of that, um, what, what did I call it? The roulette wheel of the Houston Texans tight ends, but now he's 3000 cheaper with basically similar production all over the board. He's going to probably catch a ball or two Eh, you know, fine. Sure. I'd rather go to Kuti or, uh, Danny Amendola if he plays again, not really sure. You know, all these guys are limited, but Danny, Danny Amendola at 2200, I think is just going to have a more upside and a better floor. You know, he's going to run the short routes. He's good. I, th I think he gets involved, especially if Galladay is out and maybe even Marvin Hall. So I think those injury news you need to, we want to pay attention to because it de definitely does affect uh, some of this value down here. CJ Proso, I think it's Prosois. I probably pronounced that wrong as well. Viable. Not really that great. He's kind of like the spelled, I think, to Duke Johnson, but I just don't see them trying to run the ball that that much. Kenny Stills, if in, it could be viable too. Um, I don't really know what his role is going to be uh, with uh, Kuti there, but I, th I think there's there's some definitely some value. So, I mean, the value right here, I think the best ones are going to be Amendola if he's in, and then Kiki Kuti uh, already just as the primary slot receiver is what we are assuming. Uh, so I think those two options are really good down here. And then obviously the kickers, like I said, I am fading, you know, carry on Johnson, Adrian Peterson and Atkins. I think Hall, if in is definitely a good play at 4,600. Um, I'm not really playing. I, I don't know. I don't really love Duke Johnson. I know, I know Detroit's defense is not the defense of the past um, and he could get there, but I don't know. I'd rather get up to Swift or to Marvin Jones Jr. As I said before. So that's kind of my take there. My, my favorite cash plays here are going to be Deshaun Watson. Obviously um, I do lean Stafford over uh, Fuller just because 
quarterbacks, I think, like I said, have uh, a more of an implied floor plus still really good ceiling. And then um, likely I'll be landing, you know, if I, if I don't go cooks or fuller, which, which definitely could be the case when I get into some builds here. But I think if you, I think I'm going to land on Swift or Jones Jr. as my other, my other favorite cash play. Um, and it just like, let's hypothetically put like DeAndre Swift at captain and you wanted Stafford and Watson. Okay. Yes. You don't have a lot of salary to work with left, but if you say, say Amendola is in, okay, you, you plug him in, you can still get a, you can still get a Marvin Jones Jr. And then still get Matt Prater. So, I mean, there's definitely builds. Now that's super heavy on Detroit, which I don't really like. Um, so I would maybe adjust that a little bit, uh, you know, or if you want all three and say you want to, sh- maybe you want a receiver, maybe you want Stafford and maybe you go Cooks you're not going to be able to get Swift or Jones Jr. Um, but you can still make it work by get, going down. Maybe you plug in, you know, Kuti, and now you have some correlation. Well, you already have correlation with Cooks on, on Watson. So may, maybe you go down from Cooks to Marvin Jones Jr. Now you have a receiver on both sides of the ball. And then you can go to like maybe Marvin Hall and Fairbairn, Fair, Fairbairn or Prater. So, Again, there's a lot of like different ways you can go about this. I think you kind of decide how much you're going to prioritize Swift and Jones Jr. If those are guys you want to get in, obviously Marvin Jones Jr. is going to depend more on the availability of Kenny Galladay. So if Galladay's back, it, it makes things murky. But I think Galladay is too cheap, way too cheap at nine thousand if he's in. So he likely would then just uh, probably surpass you know any thoughts I had of playing Marvin Jones Jr. because uh, I would really like him at that price. So. Thanks again for listening, guys. I really appreciate it. And uh, be on the lookout for the showdown. Uh, Our our other NFL analyst, uh, Zach Keats, is going to be doing the uh, late night Pittsburgh Ravens one. And then I also have another video out for our uh, middle of the day game. So thanks for uh, checking in and have a good one.